All right, welcome back, folks, to WrestleRant. I am Graham G.S. Matthews, where for the entire month of November, we're breaking out old Survivor Series shows as seen on the WWE Network. Uh, my last review was 95 up on Saturday, and I'm sure you're asking yourself, where's 96, 97, and 98? Well, they're already up here on the channel from last year, so I broke down the best of the best last year. This year isn't so much the worst of the worst, it's just the ones I didn't really get to last year. So be sure to check out those reviews of 96, 97, and 98. On WrestleRant from last November, today we're breaking down Survivor Series 1999. So taking place smack dab right in the middle of the Attitude Era, this was not a good show. You would think otherwise, but I mean, this is the same person, me, we're talking about here, that didn't really enjoy WrestleManias in the Attitude Era. I mean, other than 17, of course, which is arguably the greatest of all time. 13, 14, 15, 16 especially, I just didn't think they were really all that good. They weren't, they weren't the worst of all time, but... They certainly weren't among the greatest. 17 is the exception, obviously. That one's amazing and arguably the greatest of all time. But all the other ones, I thought, kind of fell flat. So that kind of was that was kind of along these lines for Survivor Series 1999. Kind of a mess of a year. I mean, there was a lot going on. But I know you had at 15, you had uh, Rock and Austin. But I thought that was really the only the only gem at Survivor Series, or rather WrestleMania 15. But getting back to Survivor Series 1999, this wasn't a great installment either. Arguably one of the worst of all time. I made an article a couple weeks ago, you know, listing the worst Survivor Series shows of all time. I think I put 91 on there. I think I missed this one. I left it out intentionally because it does have some good matches. It's not awful, not entirely awful. It does have some saving graces, but I put 91 on there, 2013, 2006, I want to say. Um, this is up there too. So breaking it down here, starting with the opener, a four on four traditional elimination Survivor Series tag team match. The Godfather, D'Lo Brown, and the Headbangers took on the Dudley Boys and the Acolytes. A very mediocre match, I guess I, I could say. The match, the, the time really just flew by, but not in a good way. It was very forgettable. Um, the sole survivors were D'Lo Brown and the Godfather, and that was just kind of it. I was expecting more from the Dudley Boys and the Acolytes teaming up, but. It didn't, I didn't care, you know? They really did not give me a reason to care. It was just a standard eight-person tag team match with four tag teams, and that was it. Pretty mediocre match to kick off the show. Um, after that, we had the in-ring debut, or the WWF debut just in general, of Kurt Angle taking on Sean Stasiak. The match itself wasn't really anything notable other than it being the debut of Kurt Angle. So the match, was, it was good, a good showcase for Kurt Angle. I don't know if this was before or after Sean Stasiak days is as meat, um, the guy was a second-generation star. Probably one of the bigger failures for second-generation stars, right up there with, like, David Flair and, you know, like, uh, David San Martino or Bruno San Martino's son, whoever that was. Um, definitely up there. This guy really did not do much. I was not a fan of his character or as a wrestler. He was okay, but um, just the fact that he shared his father's last name did not make him great by any means. The match was – it was a good debut for Kurt Angle. Got a lot of great heat talking about how he was an Olympian, he was better than everyone else, kind of coming off as a good guy, but at the same time coming off as an asshole, so thus making him a heel, and uh, the debut of Kurt Angle going you know, going down in history with the likes of The Rock, The Undertaker, Sting, and The Shield as making his debut at Survivor Series, so a great moment for the future WWE champion. After that, another 4-on-4 four -four elimination Survivor Series traditional tag team match, pitting Val, Venus, Gangrel, Steve Blackman, and Mark Henry against the Mean Stream Posse and the British Bulldog. Basically a squash. Uh, Venus's team took out all the Mean Street Posse with ease. It was down to British Bulldog. And the four other members of the opposing team, Bulldog took out Blackman. He took out Gangrel, leaving Venus and Henry with British Bulldog. And Venus, in the end, took out British Bulldog with a money shot to pick up the win. Again, a mediocre match. I just didn't really care. The Mean Street Posse, yeah, they were an entertaining trio, but they were awful in terms of credibility. Like, no one gave a shit at all. The British Bulldog had some credibility, but... By this point, I think he was facing The Rock a couple months before this, and he went from that match to this in like a, in a match with a couple other losers, so no one really gave a shit. Um, Venus and Mark Henry sole survivors, and that was really it, to be honest with you. After that, the eight-man woman, eight-woman, sorry, eight-woman tag team match, pinning Mae Young, Fabulous Moolah, Deborah, and Tori against Jacqueline, Luna, Terry Runnels, and Ivory. Just an awful, awful match. Everyone was just off, not a good match, not a good spot, went right at all. Um, just a total fucking mess, a total train wreck, and not in the good way. Um, May Young and Fabulous Moolah's team picked up the win. It was it was not elimination style. It was just just one pin, and that was it. Thank God, because it could have gone on longer. It could have been a lot worse than it was. But 
You know, thankfully it was only two minutes, but it was probably the worst two minutes you'll ever have to endure in the year of 1999. And to give the win to Mae Young and Fabulous Moolah, I mean, they were great as attractions, so to speak. I mean, that might be the wrong word, but to bring them back for a little limited role, one more run, whatever, it was good, I guess, but to have them win matches and shit like that was just awful. And this was uh, this was not good at all. After that, we had Kane versus X-Pac, and this was right in the middle of their feud, and it was, it was probably shaping up to be the best match on the card up to this point, and the most meaningful, uh, you know, as, as well. But the match was over before it really began. It was only a four-minute match, and it ended on a DQ after the rest of DX got involved. And uh, Tori? Yeah, Tori. The, not Tori Wilson, but Tori from DX was um, in a relationship of sorts with Kane at that time, so she came to his aid afterwards. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was a very disappointing match. And they were going to try to build it up to WrestleMania, thir- not 30, uh, sorry, 2000. And they didn't go with it. They just had a tag team match instead that was fairly forgettable. So the whole feud they built up for months and months and months, the payoff sucked. There was really no payoff between the between the two, between Kane and Xbox going into WrestleMania. So, I mean, it was good in furthering the feud and keeping it alive and wanted to blow it off at WrestleMania, but they didn't. And the match itself only went four minutes, so why even bother having it at all? You just do a tag team match. Put them in the... You know, the four-on-four Survivor Series Elimination Tag Team match. You know, don't do a random one-on-one bout that ends in four minutes. It was kind of disappointing. So after that, we had the Big Show squashing, literally squashing Big Bossman, Albert, and Midian within seconds of each other. This was a four-on-one Survivor Series Elimination Tag Team match. Big Show takes out everybody. Uh, Not Bossman, I'm sorry. Prince Albert, Midian, and Viscera. uh, Yeah, Viscera. And Big Bossman was the last man standing. And this was right when they were feuding, too. And, I mean, it made for some cool moments. I mean, it was very tasteless, but it made for cool moments in the feud between Big Show and Boss Man and um, the casket scene, which they replayed. It was, it was good, but the feud, it's like, this sucked. This was awful. A total burial of Viscera, Midian, uh, Midian sorry, and uh, Prince Albert. Big Boss Man just ran away, got himself counted out, and Big Show won. And then that was not the last that we would see of Big Show on this show. Uh, we would see him again in the main event, which I'll get to shortly. But this was a complete and utter waste of time. So after that, for the Intercontinental Championship, China beat Chris Jericho. Yes, you read that right, or you heard that right, rather. Um, and an actually pretty good match. I mean, Jericho and China, say what you will about Jericho being mishandled when he first came into the company. I mean, was involved in a pretty major feud with The Rock. Not a feud, so to speak, but he debuted in a segment with The Rock, and he went on to do nothing. In the months that followed, I don't even know, oh, he was at WrestleMania the following year, but... And like a triple threat, two out of three count falls, some train wreck of a match. That was pretty good, but still, um, he probably should have been in something more noteworthy. That said, um, he made China look like a million bucks. I mean, China deserves credit for looking like she was a fucking spectacle. She was the eighth wonder of the world for a reason. Or the ninth wonder of the world? I think it's eighth. I don't know. Uh, one of the wonders of the world for a reason. She was an absolute monster. And uh, Jericho put her over. I don't think in clean fashion. I'm pretty sure Miss Kitty got involved. Or she used the belt, I believe. And it was a big moment. China winning the Intercontinental Championship. Or, no, she retained the Intercontinental Championship. I'm sorry. Uh, but still, a very good match. And probably one of, if not the best match on the entire card, to be honest with you. Jericho really worked his ass off to make China look good. And he succeeded in doing just that and resulting in a very good match. So, two thumbs up. I mean, people will... Uh, you know, roll the rise of the idea of China being Intercontinental Champion. But she was, like I said, a spectacle. She was. She deserved to be in the ranks of the men. It's like Austin Kong. Like, if she stuck around in WWE as karma, there's no way she would have been battling just women uh, for as long as that she was there. And even in TNA, you know, she should be battling the men. She's that big. I mean, maybe not at this point. Her health really isn't there anymore. I think she has back problems. But when during her initial run with TNA years ago, she deserved to be. I mean, I think she did, I think she did face a few men. She faced Billy Gunn, but... Completely beside the point. Um, very good match and surprisingly pleasant, I guess, and easily probably the best match in the entire show. So after that, our final four-on-four elimination traditional tag team match of the night, pitting two cool in the Hollies against Edge and Christian in the Hardy Boys. So you have you know two of the greatest tag teams of all time, Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys, tagging with, with uh, each other and also two cool in the Hollies. You know, a, a showcase and exhibition of sorts for the tag team division. It was good for what it was. They got a lot of good time. So if there was any one match on this show that, that deserved that much time, it was this one. Um, maybe I was expecting more considering who was involved. You know, Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys, and they were on the same side. So maybe I was expecting more because of that, but still, it really was not the match it probably could have been and should have been. It was, it was good. It was, one of the better ma- it was one of the better matches of the night, but it was not too, too memorable, and especially not one of the... Uh, 
classic matches that you'll remember from Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys. But in the end, the sole survivor was Hardcore Holly. So that was a bit random. Not even not even with Crash. It was just Hardcore. So that was uh, interesting. So after that, for the WWF Tag Team titles, it was the New Age Outlaws taking on Al Snow and Mankind, successfully retaining their tag team titles against the duo of Snow and Mankind. Decent match. I mean, it was there. I mean, I was telling someone else. I mean, the New Age Outlaws... Well, as over as they were, you'll never remember a truly great New Age <clears throat> New Age Outlaws match. You know, I feel like they were they were good in the ring. They weren't awful, don't get me wrong, but they're a lot like Enzo and Cass are now. Like Enzo and Cass are the current incarnation of Road Dog and Billy Gunn as the New Age Outlaws. They're not inappropriate or anything like that, but they're not great wrestlers, but they're entertaining as all hell, and they can capture an audience, so they really don't need to be great wrestlers. If the if the audience is already invested in you because of how entertaining you are, it's not necessary. It helps, but it's not necessary. And this was another match of theirs that was just kind of, eh, you know, New Age Outlaws still, WWF Tag Team titles, champions rather, and um, that was it. So we move along to the main event. Originally, it was supposed to be Triple H defending the WWF title against The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin in a triple threat match. Uh, for the title, but however, halfway during the show, halfway through the show, Stone Cold Steve Austin got hit by a mystery person, which we wouldn't find out for another year, I believe. Um, he got hit by someone in a car, and forcing, of course, out of the main event. And, and it was used to write him out of storylines for the foreseeable future as he underwent neck surgery, I believe. And in his place, revealed as the third member of the main event, the Big Show, of course, after we saw him earlier on in the evening. I mean, he wasn't deplorable by this point. He had just debuted in 99, so I'm not going to say it was the worst thing to put the belt on him. But the match was not good at all. Um, I don't know what it is, but triple threat matches at Survivor Series, are they're just not good. I think it was this show. Um, was it? I think it was the one in 90. No, maybe this is the one that I'm thinking. No, I'm thinking of SummerSlam. I'm sorry, that same year. That wasn't a good triple threat either. But yeah, Big Show, I mean, the, the crowd popped for um for Big Show coming out and especially winning the championship, his first WWF title on his only for the next three years before he would win back the title at this very same pay-per-view in 2002 from Brock Lesnar. Um, but the match was, you know, total clusterfuck, a lot of interference, and Big Show in the end winning the belt. Didn't really excite me as a non-Big Show fan, but at that time it really wasn't the worst thing they could do. He was still fresh-faced and gave him, you know, the... The push that he needed after being relegated to the upper mid card for most of 1999, but not really a, uh, a a great way of going off the show after the previous you know nine matches weren't really anything special. So that was Survivor Series 1999, not a good show at all. I mean there were I mean it wasn't an entirely lost cause. There were some decent matches, like I said, China and Jericho surprisingly was actually very good. And then the subsequent tag team match, Too Cool, the Hollies versus Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys was pretty good as well, but everything else was either mediocre or just plain bad, so at, that being said, needless to say, um, you should not watch this pay-per-view on the WWE Network, I mean, you can if you want, but of all the ones that I'll be talking about and have talked about and all the ones available to you on the WWE Network, this should not be the first one that you watch, there are far more, far better Survivor Series installments that you should be checking out around this era or just of all time. So that's it. I'll be back tomorrow with my review of Survivor Series 2000, also seen on the WWE Network. But in the meantime, and in between time, you guys can catch me on Twitter at WrestleRant, on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Graham.GSM.Matthews. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. All support is greatly appreciated. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, folks. I'm Graham GSM Matthews, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.